Don't want to end up a cartoon in a cartoon graveyard. Today we look at Toon Lagoon, also known as, seriously, they licensed this? First you stroll down King's Row, full of comic strip characters who make Woody Woodpecker look like the top of the zeitgeist. Look, I like it when theme parks go for non-obvious, non-pandering to the youth franchises, and it's cool to see important pieces of comic strip history like Windsor McKay honored, but even I had never heard of some of these comics before I started reading the comics curmudgeon. I mean, how do you dedicate whole stores to Gasoline Alley or Beetle Bailey? Oh, you don't. You just decorate them and fill them with whatever generic merch you have. Including Betty Boop merch, even though you have a separate Betty Boop store right across the street. Still, I'm less offended here than I was when Disney wasted a Muppet gift shop with that nonsense. While Marvel Island tried to recreate a comic book setting jumping out of the page, this just props up the page. But there are speech bubbles around with catchphrases of some of your favorite cartoons like Popeye and Party Down. Are we having fun yet? And there's the Comic Strip Cafe, which for some reason features Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah, I know they had a comic strip for a while, but it's not what they're known for. Just past the inexplicable cavalcade of random cartoon characters is a slightly more explicable trip to Popeye's home of Sweet Haven. You know, Popeye, a character who actually started in comic strips. You can grab a bite at Wimpy's, where it's always Tuesday. The day he'll gladly pay you for the burger he already ate every day. Yes, come to Wimpy's and constantly pay for whatever you ate last week. Then you can explore Popeye's ship or take a ride on Popeye and Bluto's bilge rat barges, one of those round raft water rides. The frame story here is that Popeye and Bluto have competing raft companies and Bluto sabotages Popeye's and then the usual thug captures girl, hero saves girl business. A few steps away, there's another thug captures girl, hero saves girl water ride. Dudley do rights rips off falls. That's not redundant. This is the wettest islands of all the islands of adventure. But I have more to say about this one because I freaking love Jay Ward. What's not to love? The cheesy animation, the terrible puns, the subtle satire, the lack of a fourth wall, it was all so brilliant. And despite my wisecrack about Brendan Fraser, I even have a soft spot for the feature length film adaptations. Honestly, I think the Dudley Do Right movie's only real crime was being made too early for Amy Adams to play Nell. And you bet your ass I'm going to see the Peabody and Sherman movie. You know, as soon as I get a break from editing f***ing theme park videos. Without Jay Ward, we probably wouldn't have The Simpsons or any other modern cartoon you love. But despite the company's massive influence on pop culture, they're still not a household name the way Disney or Warner or even Hanna-Barbera are. Sure, some noble parents are passing Bullwinkle on to their kids, but it's not like the stores are overflowing with Fractured Fairy Tales merch. And the one thing that looks like it could be a Bullwinkle-related store here is just an internet cafe. With yet more Betty Boop crap. But I'm happy to see so much of Ward's work honored here. Even if it's mostly decorations shoehorned in where they don't quite make sense. I really, really, really hate to be nitpicking on this ride. I'm grateful that any Jay Ward ride exists. Really, there's no reason it should. But it does, and that's great. But... While I appreciate the effort put into this ride, it's pretty blatantly cheap. The models look like the characters, sure, but they barely move. And you could chalk that up to being true to the limited animation of the original show, but the original show was also fast. They packed so much dialogue and so many gags into a five minute runtime, but here you feel like you're waiting through five minutes of emptiness between gags. I mean, look at how much activity is going on in the dark ride portions of Splash Mountain, and that's based on a movie where nothing happens. But I know, I know, there's no reason for Universal to sink that much money into an attraction based on a Jay Ward cartoon. And let's be fair, there is a lot going for this ride. They're true to the silent film and vaudeville stage motifs of the show, there's clips from episodes playing in the queue, bits from the theme recreated throughout the ride, sufficiently cartoony architecture, a paycheck for voice goddess June Foray, and of course, lots of Disney parodies. And according to Wikipedia, these guys are voiced by Charles Nelson Reilly and Dom DeLuise. Dom DeLuise. That's pretty impressive casting for a throwaway Country Bears parody. From a commercial standpoint, it's probably a better ride than any Jay Ward property deserves. But from an artistic and comedic standpoint, there was so much more potential. But there's no time to mourn what might have been. We have to move on. Tomorrow we'll see a land with yet another water ride. So don't miss our next exciting episode, Frightening in the Dark Ride or The Lost World Showcase.